So Chris, I know you, you helped me quite a lot at the beginning of my ministry, which I came to through a degree of ill health, having tried to burn the candle at both ends as a primary school teacher and a lay preacher and leader, and found myself needing more depth than I'd ever had in the 40 previous years as a Christian. And things that I learned about contemplative prayer and the need for depth, I know have really affected your life through times of ill health as well. Yes, I think that um, uh, in some ways I'd, I'd put my, my ministry in two halves, and that's not taking anything away from the first half, but there was something that changed about 20 years into ministry. So what, you've got a way to go yet, Ruth. <laughs> um, but I found myself in the early 90s, um, firstly um, seeking in a way that resulted in my going on a, a renewal journey. Um, in which charismatic renewal was very important for me. Um, within a year of the focus of that journey, I found myself um, having cancer surgery. And um, those two together were very significant because they interacted with one another. Um, the renewal journey gave me resources for facing up to and enduring and dealing with um, concerns about whether I had very long to live. Um, it was very challenging. Um, I was keeping and still keep a personal journal and I can remember a few days after coming out of hospital writing in my journal, um, I'm being tempered on the anvil of God's love. Um, God's, hands are, God's hands are strong but they're rough. And um, I don't know um, the whys and the wherefores of that, um, that cancer, um, but it brought me to the place where life and death were very real. And the journey that I'd been on spiritually put me in a place where, by the grace of God, I felt I was able to go deeper. I was able to go deeper because of my need. And I think that, you know, when I read um, the account of Jesus talking to the Pharisees and he says it's it's not the healthy who need a doctor but but the sick he's saying to them you're so complacent you don't think you have any needs therefore I can't help you and it's when we face our weaknesses and when we face the things that really stretch and challenge us then we rely more upon God and then God has elbow room in which to do things with us and they may only come though these things aren't continuous they will come maybe once or twice, but you feed on them and you go back to them and they renew you and God uses them again as you reprocess them. And so continually um, we plan for the future and yet there's a sense in which the future is God's, not ours. And there are things that you learn. Um, I can remember that the week before I went into hospital for surgery, um, uh, uh, somebody was preaching uh, in the church where I was pastor, it was a church anniversary, so I wasn't preaching that day. And um, they quoted something that somebody would said to them in their ministry years before, um, a church member. Um, Remember in the dark what you learnt in the light. And um, I took that with me into hospital, and that remained very important for me. And what I found afterwards was that that vulnerability and that weakness, and in turn that richness and strength that came from the grace of God, enriched my ministry in terms of how I was able to be alongside other people who were in similar situations of extremity afterwards. It doesn't provide you with the answers, but it puts you in a different place, and that place is where you're more reliant upon God. It's why I'm so glad you're taking the, the, the theme of deeper as well as higher and wider because uh, I think I was very fortunate to come to ministry from a time of realising my own vulnerability and brokenness because it meant that I only offer vulnerability as a great strength. It's where God's strength is seen. So uh, do you think this will help ministers who are trying to be everything and, and maybe something you can bring to ministry in general? Well, I hope so. And I think that the, the, the deeper is a vital theme for ministers um, because, I mean, it's an important theme for everybody, but um, one of the things I'm aware of is that um, certainly in my ministry, and I think in the ministry of other people as I, as I look at them, um, there are times when they don't take seriously enough the grace of God. 
they preach the grace of God. But as I see people justifying themselves by showing how busy they are, I think, are we into works or are we into grace? Are we trying to justify our existence? Are we so insecure that we have to present an image of being very, very busy? Um, or maybe be very busy because we feel that that's the only way we can justify our existence. Um, and I've had to learn, and I want to encourage other people to learn, that we begin with the grace of God, that what we offer is not our own competence, what we offer is Christ. I can remember sitting with you in the very early days of my ministry and you being honest enough to explain to me the habits of your day and sitting and reading a book and it gave me the, well, the license really to say here's somebody who's been before me, uh, who's still surviving and who has put some habits into his day that allow a little bit of rhythm, which I'm, I'm hoping through your presidential year you'll be able to share with lots of people for a healthier church really as, as ministers begin to realise the grace of God. What I don't want to do is run on empty, and there has to be a balance, there has to be a place where I take in, and that will include reading, it'll include prayer and scripture, it'll include fellowship with other people and learning from other people. These things are vital parts of what we might call spiritual disciplines, um, because what we can't offer people is just what we have. Yeah. It has to be deeper than that. And, you know, deeper is an important theme. I still feel I'm scratching the surface and there is so much more. And boy, is that exciting.